Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Sarah Ellefson, a postdoc associate at Baylor University. So normally I ask the speaker to give a short introduction about themselves, but since I just had you on here, Sarah, a few weeks ago, I think we could probably skip that part. Um, if any of you listeners did not see her first episode that was aired, I believe, um, just about four or five weeks ago, feel free to go back and find that one um, and give it a listen because it's a great one as well. So Sarah, I saw some of the, some other studies you've done recently uh, that tend to focus on supplementation of vitamin A or beta carotene to pigs at different stages of production. Would you mind telling us about these studies and the kind of work you've been doing? Yeah, absolutely. So the work with vitamin A and beta carotene was actually the main focus of my dissertation work. And so we looked at it in both nursery pigs and finishing pigs. And when we looked at it in nursery pigs, we were really kind of seeing if we could potentially have some influence with a fat source. So we ended up having um, a no added fat diet, a diet that was supplemented with choice white grease, and then also a diet that was supplemented with soy oil. And what we ended up seeing um, was that when we supplement beta carotene, we really don't see an influence on vitamin A levels, either in the plasma or in the liver. And then when we supplement our vitamin A, um, once more, our plasma levels are going to tend to stay steady, but we do see an increase in our hepatic stores of that vitamin A. So that was really kind of neat to see. Um, And then with the different fat choices, we actually did not see an influence of either the choice white grease or the soy oil on vitamin A or beta carotene, which is interesting because they are both fat soluble. So then we kind of took those supplementations and took them over to the finisher with some finishing pigs. And what we really looked at was this time we made sure our beta carotene was going to be supplemented to the point where that using an equation we found in the NRC it will be converted to provide the same amount of vitamin A as our vitamin A supplementation, whereas previously we just looked to see if we supplement, supplemented similar amounts if we would see a, any sort of biological influence. And so with this time when we supplemented it, once again, our plasma levels for vitamin A stayed consistent. And um, actually our hepatic levels weren't statistically significant this time, although we did see a numerical increase if that makes any difference. So, but it was really interesting in the finisher when we found that we supplemented those vitamin A that we actually had a more robust immune status in our in our um, in our gilts that we looked at. They had a better response to our vaccines. They had higher higher titer levels. We also looked at the mammary gland development of these gilts. So vitamin A is actually involved in a lot of mammary gland metabolism and development, and so we wanted to see if we could potentially influence that in our gilts before they would become sows. With the idea that if we can increase the amount of mammary gland development before she's bred that she could potentially have better milk production down the line for her for her um, piglets. And um, unfortunately, we also did not see any difference with that vitamin A supplementation in those, in those gilts either. So one question I had is um, when looking at the hepatic levels of, in that first study in the nursery, when looking at the hepatic levels of vitamin A in the, um, with the, with the diet that fed vitamin A and then with the diet that fed beta carotene, um, it was numerically higher um, in the diet that fed vitamin A. Um, and you mentioned briefly about like that NRC adjusted equation. So what exactly is that? And is, was that kind of expected? Or did, you ex- did you expect to see a higher level um, in the beta carotene diet due to the, it being converted? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So when we looked at the beta carotene being supplemented to have similar levels as vitamin A, I did actually expect you know, to see very similar hepatic levels between the vitamin A supplement diet and the beta carotene supplement diet. Um, and so our, our control diet was somewhere around 47 part per million. Our beta carotene was around 54 and our vitamin A was about 50, 58 part per million. So they're similar. And we did see that and uh, we did see somewhat of an increase with the beta carotene. Um, my assumption could either be that the product that we were using was potentially not um correct for the equation that we found in the NRC or maybe the NRC equation was maybe not fully compatible with the product, one of the two. And so while we did see a slight increase, we didn't see a full increase. And then it's also possible because the the body does use beta carotene as beta carotene in addition to converting it for vitamin A, that maybe our guilt were using those beta carotene supplementations for something in the body related directly to beta carotene and not necessarily that conversion to vitamin A. 
So they're also, just to kind of touch on it for um, maybe some people who are less um, informed about it, but so what exactly is the um, importance of vitamin A um, in pigs, especially when you're looking at nursery pigs or gilt developing pigs? Um, what's nutritionally, how, to, how helpful is it for them? Yeah. So vitamin A, um, it has a role in vision. You know, I think, I think kind of growing up, everyone kind of heard, oh, you have to eat your carrots to kind of see. And our carrots are really rich in those carotenoids that get used to vitamin A. But apart from just being involved in vision, it also has a huge role in helping our immune, cell, immune system cells kind of differentiate and be produced. So it does kind of help with our immune system. And as we get into the older animals, it has an important role in reproduction as well and helping maintain and regulate some of those um, pathways. So one other question I had, um, based on those studies when reading them, is it looked like, um, kind of like I mentioned earlier, of how the hepatic levels did increase for both diets, but the plasma levels for vitamin A did not change at all. So what would um, the cause of that be then you think? Yeah, so that's also another great question. So when we're looking at plasma as a source for vitamin A status, um, our plasma vitamin A levels and our serum vitamin A levels are actually very highly regulated. Um, it is just a unique function of our bodies. And so liver or vitamin A is actually going to be stored in the liver. So when we're going to supplement that vitamin A, it's going to be stored there and then the body will disperse it as it's needed. So as long as our plasma levels are where we need them to be or not you know, experiencing any deficiencies, they're going to remain constant. And the liver is actually really cool when it comes to vitamin A because even if we do experience a small deficiency in vitamin A for a bit, it will in a sense sacrifice some of its stores to help keep our plasma levels as constant as possible and maintain that homeostasis until its stores become depleted. And so actually plasma vitamin A might not always be the best way to tell the vitamin A status of the animal just because of that homeostasis feature that um, our bodies have. Awesome. Well, I th uh, thanks for coming on the show and sharing all this data with us. Um, we appreciate you having you on for um, as many episodes as you can fit in. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me again. I really enjoyed it. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition, and if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com, and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.